Let me demonstrate how we can add some infrared emulation on this landscape image using only Lightroom Classic. As always, you can follow along this tutorial by downloading the raw file from the link in the description of this video. And now let's begin. First, as always, we want to get the basic adjustments out of the way. So what this means for this image, I'm going to change the profile from Adobe Color to Adobe Standard, just to lessen the contrast a little bit. Then I'm going to adjust those tonal sliders a bit right away. This image has too much highlights for me, so I want to bring them down. And by bringing them down, we can reveal a little more detail up in the sky. And some of the more brighter areas do not look this overexposed anymore, especially right here in that building. At the same time, I want to bring down the shadows, which will introduce a little more contrast. So let's go with something like this. And at the same time, I want to further bring up the contrast by increasing the whites, because right now the image starts to look too dark. So let's bring up the whites just a little bit, always paying close attention to the histogram because we don't want to overexpose this image at this point. But this is looking pretty good. Finally, I do also want to bring up the blacks just a little bit like this to prevent those very dark areas from being too dark. I think that looks like a very good base image already. What I want to do as well is to play around with texture, clarity, and dehaze. In this case, I'm going to bring up the texture. This will kind of sharpen smaller details in the image. At the same time, I'm going to bring down the clarity. And I want to bring down the dehaze to introduce some softness overall. And finally, let's bring up the vibrance. Let me just say we shouldn't do too big of a change to the colors at this point because we are going to manipulate those pretty heavily later on in the editing process. What comes next is some masking before we can apply the infrared emulation. So let's go ahead, open up the masking menu. I want to kind of set up the scene to look more like an infrared image. If you know what I mean, infrared images always have this very deep dark blue sky and that's exactly what I'm aiming for. So I'm going to use a color range mask and just click somewhere right here in the blue area. This will get us a very good mask for our purpose. However, we want to say subtract, choose a linear gradient and take away a part from the bottom since we only want to darken the top part of the sky. So I think that looks like a proper selection. Let's bring down the exposure quite a bit. And you can see how this will add some really good contrast. So I think I'm going with something like that. Let's see if we can bring the mask further down. Just around here looks perfect to me. Then I also want to add a linear gradient for the very near foreground. And I just want to make it slightly darker by bringing down the exposure, adding almost like a vignetting effect to this image. And let's use another linear gradient covering all the water in the foreground like that. And I just want to give it a little more structure because we have some fine white lines due to the waves in the water. And I want to get a little more attention on them. So I'm going to bring up the clarity, which already helps tremendously. And I'm also going to add texture. This makes the water look way more interesting. Then let's also add a little bit of glow coming in from the right side. I'm using a radial gradient for that and I'm making it really, really big. Let's rotate it slightly and just drag it further to the right. Okay, now what I want to do in here is to bring up the blacks. And I also want to increase the whites to add more brightness coming in from that side. Wonderful, we could make this radial gradient a little bigger. Just like this, all right. And finally, I do wanna add one more linear gradient covering the foreground because I want to add a little more contrast in here just to make the water more interesting. And we could maybe bring down the temperature slightly, giving it more of a blue tint down here. Okay, so this already looks quite good. I might want to adjust the white balance slightly. So I wanna bring up the temperature just around here and we can see a very subtle 
green color cast. So I'm going to increase the tint to get rid of that. All right, that looks great. So with the masking and the basic adjustments out of the way, now let's apply the infrared emulation. You might be thinking we could just play around with the hue of the orange, green and yellow color tones in the color mixer. But there's a much, much easier way to set this up. And that is happening in the calibration panel all the way down. Usually I use these sliders to improve the colors, adding a little more saturation or slightly shifting the hue a bit. However, in this case, we're going to change things drastically. Just to show you how easy it is, let's just bring down the blue primary hue all the way. And instantly, we almost made it look like infrared. But there are a few more adjustments we need to do. For the purpose of this infrared emulation, that means we are going to bring down the green primary hue as well, and we are going to drop it quite a lot. And we are going to raise the red primary hue. So something like this already looks quite cool. Now using the calibration tools in this way, we have set up our image for more infrared adjustments. So what I want to do next is I want to head into the color mixer and now we want to go into the hue panel and further adjust the colors we need to fix. So for this image, this just means we want to adjust the foliage a little more because we are still missing that classic pink infrared look. So let's simply start with the yellow hue slider and bring it down all the way. This in turn will make the foliage look a little more orange-ish. We can further adjust this by bringing down the orange hue. Just like that. Wonderful. And we could bring up the red hue beca because the red tones start to look a little bit weird and we don't want that. Let's raise the red hue just like this. Wonderful. Another thing that is bothering me is the sky. Infrared shots do have some kind of cyan sky going on sometimes. However, I really don't like it for this scene. So what I want to do to fix that is to simply bring up the blue hue. And let's raise it until we get something that looks a little more natural like this. Perfect. So this is looking pretty good so far. We also want to head into the saturation tab now. Here, let's bring up the red saturation first kind of just fixing the roof of that building. Then I want to bring down the orange saturation because the foliage is a little overwhelming at the moment. Wonderful. And I also want to bring down the blue saturation a bit. Just like that. Okay. Now we can make use of the luminance slider to further improve the infrared look. So let's head into the luminance tab. Infrared has a very, very unique look to it because infrared will make foliage look a lot brighter. Getting this right is kind of hard and I actually would say it's kind of impossible, but we can get pretty close. We can do that by raising the orange luminance and thus making the foliage brighter overall. So just like this, we can also bring up the yellow luminance further improving this effect. And we could try raising the red luminance. So this has helped a little bit. Still, it's not quite there yet. Let me quickly bring down the blue luminance to further improve the contrast in the sky. And now what I want to do to further improve the foliage color is to go back into the masking menu. Here, we want to grab the color range mask. And I'm going to click somewhere right in here. This will get us a pretty good selection. I want to bring up the refine slider some more to target more of these color tones. Uh, this is looking pretty good. And what I want to do now to make the foliage brighter is to simply raise the exposure. What else we can do is to bring up the shadows. This will help a lot since the foliage consists mostly of shadows. So as you can see, raising the shadows really helps in this case. And we could also raise the blacks. Wonderful, that's looking much, much closer to the original infrared look. However, the colors might be a little off. So what I want to do is I want to switch the hue and we're going to use this hue tab for that and slightly bring it down so we get some more pinkish color tones. 
that's totally up to you. I don't want to really overdo it, but I think something around here looks quite good. But at this point, the colors start to become a little too saturated. So what I want to do as well is to bring down the saturation a notch right around here. And I think this is looking very, very solid. So just so you can get an idea, let's compare to before. We started with the image on the left and you can see it really does look like an infrared image after just a bunch of Lightroom adjustments. Now the last step would be to apply a little bit of sharpening in the details tab. So let's do that real quick. I'm reducing the radius all the way down while increasing the details all the way up. And of course I'm applying some masking while holding down the Alt key to see where the sharpening is applied. And now let's raise the amount of sharpening. Done. So there are also a few sensor spots in this image. I'm going to use the healing tool for that to get rid of them. Let's click on visualize spots so we can see them. And now I'm just going to paint over all these sensor spots. There's also a tree in the bottom left corner I want to get rid of. Let's see if we can use the content aware remove tool to fix that. Just roughly painting over this and hopefully Lightroom will fix it so we don't need to go into Photoshop. Not quite, let's try another time. And another time, come on. I might as well just crop it out. All right, and here we have the final image. So I hope this little infrared emulation Lightroom tutorial was interesting and helpful. If you have any other tricks to share, which I might not know, let me know in the comments. And thank you so much for watching this video.